In this chapter, we're going to be talking about some of the terminology we're using for the video. We're going to be talking about performance and scalability. Now, performance is how quickly your site can respond to a request. Usually it's code optimizations. Uh, scalability is how many requests per second your site can handle. Usually you make a site more scalable by adding additional hardware to it. Usually you make a site more performant by adding code optimizations. So let's take a look at a Drupal stack uh, and talk about some of the terminology along the way. Here we have the standard platform that Drupal runs on. At the base, you have Linux, your operating system. Uh, Drupal needs a database. Oftentimes, we use MySQL. Um, Drupal runs on the PHP programming language. It needs a web server. We use Apache as our web server. Uh, and then on the outside, we have the browser, Firefox, Safari, however clients will be accessing the site. So this is, this is the standard platform. We call it the LAMP stack. And ironically enough, a lot about scaling Drupal is not necessarily about Drupal. It's about all of the other layers that make up the Drupal platform altogether. So uh, Drupal is a content management system. And that's about all it is. There's not significant caching layers within Drupal itself. So a lot of what we're going to be covering is ways to optimize Apache, ways to optimize PHP, ways to optimize MySQL, uh, even introducing some additional layers into the software stack to make Drupal ultimately more performant. And also make Drupal smarter, make it, make it work less so it doesn't have to uh, do redundant activities. Like if an uh, anonymous user comes into the site, Drupal should recognize that, this, that it's uh, the same anonymous user that was there just moments ago. And if it doesn't need to do any additional work, then let's cache that and make it a, a, smarter, uh, a smarter CMS. So when we talk about performance, you can think of it as a fast track through this software stack. Uh, these, these buckets here represent different caching points and it's a streamlined, it's a streamlined way to go, through, to go through the stack. So let's talk about some of the technologies that we'll be discussing. First, on the outset, outside of the standard LAMP, LAMP stack, you have a CDN, a content delivery network. Now, not everybody can afford a CDN because what a, what a CDN is, is it's a bunch of computers that are stored in different places all over, all over the world. Uh, and uh, the content delivery network, what it does is if a user comes in from India and ultimately your servers are in Texas, it's going to serve the website uh, on the computers in India. So the CDN will oftentimes have cached copies of your site. Uh, and if you're coming from India or Australia or Paris, it'll serve the site from wherever it's closest to those computers. It's, it's a great way to handle spiky traffic. Uh, and we'll look, at, we'll look at CDN integration into Drupal. Next up, we have Varnish. Varnish is a proxy cache. And what that is, is again, it's, it's an optimization for the anonymous user experience. And uh, rather than passing the anonymous experience onto Drupal, we'll serve it from Varnish. And Varnish stores its copies in memory, uh, its copies of, of Drupal web pages. So again, it's a fast experience. It lives closer to the LAMP stack. Uh, might live on your, on your servers in Texas, as the example we were using before. With an Apache, a significant optimization that we can make is called mod expires. And what mod expires does is it interacts with your visitor's web browser and it informs the web browser. It says, hey, I've already downloaded this CSS file. I've already downloaded this image. I've already downloaded this JavaScript file. Do I need to download it again? And if it hasn't been modified, then Apache will send headers to say, you know what, use use your cached copy of the CSS file. Use your cached copy of the image. Uh, and that way, it makes the downloading of the web page significantly faster because the web browser can use cached copies. 
Next up, on the PHP level, we install, we will be installing an opcode cache. Uh, and what an opcode cache does is if the PHP code hasn't changed, if it hasn't been modified, then we're going to serve the compiled copy of the code. We don't need to parse it and, and, and uh, parse it and create compiled code again. We'll just serve, we'll serve the cached code. So we'll be looking at that. Next up, between Drupal, between PHP and MySQL, we have uh, SQL queries going back and forth. So one of the things, one of the mantras you'll often hear in the performance and scalability around realm of Drupal is to protect your database. There's a lot of thrashing on the database in Drupal. So anything that we can do to reduce the queries that are sent to the database, we want to do. A great way to do that is with memcached. And what memcache is, is it stores copies of database queries in memory. So rather than serving the same query again, going through MySQL and all of that, we're just going to serve them straight from memory. Uh, and it, it leads to significant performance increases, especially for logged in users, especially for authenticated users. That's a big, that's a big win there. So while Varnish was for the anonymous user experience, we introduced memcache into the system to optimize the authenticated user experience. And lastly, what we're going to look at at the database level itself is the query cache. And it's kind of a, kind of a dumb cache in that uh, it, it gets wiped very often. But what it does is uh, select queries, read-only queries, uh, will get stored in uh, a cache uh, within MySQL, and that's called the query cache. So it's, it's yet another way to uh, speed uh, or speed up the, re the amount of queries that are sent back and forth between Drupal and the database. Now that you've had an overview of the software stack that's usually sitting behind a Drupal installation and some of the optimizations we can make along the way, let's get our hands dirty and dive in and look at each of these technologies. Drupal.